Hi, Chuck here again. Just wanted to give an update on the FR Sky receiver range for my new build using the Racer Cube all in one flight controller. If you looked at my earlier videos, you'll remember that I was having some limited, uh, limited distance or range on my receiver, and I was basically getting 20 to 30 meters range with it before uh, my before my um, transmitter started beeping uh, final uh, morning tones before you lose signal. So I did speak to banggood.com. Actually, I emailed them, and they're going to send me out a new receiver board uh, for this. So I'll be receiving um, this top board uh, for the for the racer cube. Oops. I'll go ahead and give that a shot and uh, see how it works out. But in the meantime, I decided to just add in a FR Sky D4R receiver. So um, I did have some problems doing that though. So when I installed the receiver, um, it um, would just lose uh, signal and just uh, lose RSSI and just completely just drop out of the air. And I couldn't figure out what it was. I put in the, um, the stock antenna and uh, flew it yesterday uh, with the stock antenna on it and um, it didn't drop out of the air so I had to uh, start looking for some other uh, causes but in any case let me just quickly go over um, what you have to do to get this hooked up so I'll give you a shot at this right here so <clears throat> the deal is is that um, you use this um, UART on the bottom here you uh, are number two to plug in your receiver and this has uh, voltage on it also on the side over here is your RSSI pin uh, I'll give you more information on the RSSI in a bit but um, this is where you would uh, plug in your RSSI from your receiver and what you want to do is, is go ahead and uh, on your uh, D4R go ahead and pin um, three and four together and that'll turn on the um, PPM output. So the PPM output will be put out on the um, number one port and the RSSI will be put out on the uh, number two port. So you can go ahead and connect your signal wire for your RSSI directly to the pin. You gotta solder up some headers. So solder up a header and you can uh, plug in right to the RSSI. Um, the other, other thing you have to do is uh, turn off the onboard receiver to enable the external one. So, just a shot there. So, a couple other things that you'll have to change is uh, in, in uh, Betaflight, what you need to do is go into ports and turn off your S bus and turn on smart port telemetry. And what that'll do is allow the uh, UART uh, 2 to um, be used to. Um, receive your receiver output. Um, let's see. Oh, and change the mode to uh, PPM as well. So so your um, UI might look a little bit different, but Jeff definitely change it to PPM and use the smart port on the um, UART number two. Alright, so that was, that's, the, that's the configuration and the hookup. Uh, let me just give you uh, just a little bit of update. Um, in Betaflight, the um, the um, RSSI signal for the, the D4R is inverted, so you'll have to use a parameter in Betaflight, and so you'll do um, it's a set RSSI PPM input equal one to invert it, and that should resolve it. However, there's actually a bug in Betaflight. And the bug number I have written down here, bug number 1294. So 1294 one, is what's broken in beta flight that will not allow your RSSI to work properly um, if you're using um, PWM. And uh, one thing you, you might, might have to do is put in a low pass filter for your um, RSSI signal since it's being put out as a PWM signal and what that'll do is it'll convert it to uh, a steady analog uh, voltage that 
should be able to be read. I think it goes up to about three volts. So um, I'll put a link in the description to um, a page where you can uh, look up how to create your own low-pass filter. You'll just need a capacitor and a resistor. And um, I do have mine uh, shrink-wrapped. I don't have it exposed right now, but it's it's under... Well, in any case, you'll have to plug it in, plug your low-pass filter into the um, RSSI um, output line. Um, at first I thought that I had some bad, I had a bad uh, FR Sky receiver, but I ordered two and I swapped them out and got the same results with the copter falling out of the air. So um, what I want to tell you is that while you're, if you want to use an external receiver, uh, do not use the, the 5 volts that's supplied for the FPV camera. So there will be 5 volts on that plug on the uh, controller board and right now I have disconnected that um, which was uh, connected to my HS1177 camera and just out of a hunch I thought maybe there was a little bit of voltage instability so I pulled that plug and went out for a test flight this morning and um, everything uh, seemed to fly pretty well, flew a whole pack so what I'll have to do is uh, go out later on today and maybe fly another couple packs and see whether that uh, external receiver is working but in any case um, do not use the 5 volts and what I would recommend is just soldering on 5 volts onto the flight uh, soldering, soldering onto the um, 12 volts on the flight controller uh, power distribution board and just running that up to your your camera so so right now I do have the the camera disconnected and what I'll be doing is um, pulling a pin off of the pulling the power pin off of the back of the HS1177 camera and uh, running that to a wire on the uh, on the side of the flight controller here so that's gonna about just about wrap it up I'll post a follow-up when I receive the replacement receiver from banggood.com but I'm hoping that uh, getting this external receiver will just allow me to go out and fly it and enjoy it until um, the Banggood one gets here but if it doesn't work out as far as range I'll just have to leave this on here and uh, decide whether I want to swap out the flight controller um, later on. I, I thought I have an extra F3 uh, flight controller that I, might, that I might just use and so what I might just do is pull off the flight controller board and the receiver board and just use the ESC's and uh, replace everything else. Um, of course I'll have to add in an OSD separately but that, that's not a big deal. So in any case, um, it's been flying pretty well. Um, uh, just another word on the Betaflight uh, stock PIDs. Um, they flew really great out of the box. However, I did uh, bump up the D, D gains on the uh, pitch and roll. So I think I went up about four points on each. So um, still tuning, but uh, it's getting pretty locked in. And uh, it was great right out of the box. So. Um, that's it. Have a great day. Talk to you later.